What's going on, everybody? Brad and Greta Zood, Parenting with the Zoods podcast. And on this episode, it's kind of like a dual episode. It's kind of like a two for one. We're going to be talking about our upcoming overnight that Greta and I are Yay. having, which can't come soon enough. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about independent playtime for babies, for children, and how to do it, what it means, and how it's going to dramatically transform your life. So if you're listening to this on iTunes, thank you very much, but you can head over to YouTube and see us live in studio uh, where you get to see the lovely Miss Greta in person. But hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if it's your first time here. We're Brad and Greta Zood, number one best-selling parenting authors. We have eight children of our own, and we're one of the few channels out there on YouTube that talk specifically about parenting and we're the best at it in the whole wide world and you should listen to everything we say and completely humble and do everything that we say mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding <clears throat> but um, we're really excited because one of the things that we do inside of our family inside of our marriage is try to make overnights a priority so our goal and we don't always hit it but it's our goal, we hit it most times, is to have a quarterly overnight. So we want to try to get away from the kids for two days, at least at least a day, but ideally two, and just be ourselves. Just remember that we're husband and wife first without our children, that we were a family before we had children, as they say, <laughs> and uh, recharge, talk, unplug, relax, um, which is always a good thing to do. I, mm -hmm. I feel like I get to do that a little bit more than Greta, but it's always my goal to pluck Greta out of the mommy role. Um, not as often as I can, but regularly. To just remember that although being a mother is your calling and you're extremely well, extremely good at it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, that's not your only calling as well. And to rest mm -hmm. and to recharge and to just not go crazy. Mental health, I tell you. It's all about the mental oh health. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Whole nother topic. Yeah, so we, you know, it's funny because we're, we're, so one of our favorite things to do is to go to bed and breakfast. So we really like the, so first of all, there are, there are, I was very skeptical. I held out for years and years about bed and breakfast because like, there are two different types of bed and breakfasts, in my opinion. Type number one is where it's like a traditionally set up home and there's like a bedroom next to a bedroom across the hall from a bedroom and you all three share a bathroom. Yeah, that's awkward. No, the, we do not. That is not at all what we would like to take no. part in like for one second. No, we like the hominess and the uniqueness of a bed and breakfast, but the convenience of a hotel. <laughs> Yeah, so the bed and breakfast that we do go to, um, you either have your own cabin or you have your own suite room on a floor or something that's all-encompassing, self-fulfilling. You don't have to exit the room mm -hmm. to go to a shared bathroom with anybody. Yeah, that'd be just kind of odd. Yeah. And we do this cool thing where wherever we go, we buy a mug, so we've got this collection of mugs from all the most of the bed and breakfast uh, that we have. But we, yeah, we love the food. You know, typically the food is amazing mm -hmm. when you go to bed and breakfast. And, you know, when you factor in the cost of like at least breakfast and snacks and stuff, it's really not that much more expensive. I mean, we've stayed at some very nice ones that were a little over the top, but typically it's not too much more to stay at a nice bed and breakfast. You're making me really excited. <laughs> I love it when you speak breakfast to me. <laughs> I, it's just going to be so fun. I'm really excited. Yeah. So this time we're, you know, we have some classics. So we, so we live in Iowa, which is three hours away from Chicago. So we love doing, you know, we love doing the city thing. Um, it's actually on our list to do. And I thought really, cause, cause this trip, so we just, we, we planned one. It's coming up here in two weeks and I handled everything. And I was going to surprise her. And one of the things that... But you can't. You can't keep But I can't, surprised. so I told her, no. Um, one of the things that I want to do, though, is take a city skyline tour of Chicago mm -hmm. down on the river. So for those of you that don't know, Chicago goes that, and then mm -hmm. it empties right out onto the lake, Lake Michigan. 
um, and everyone that we know that's done the lake tour of Chicago or the, the river cruise, the river tour is like, oh my gosh, it's fabulous. You learn so much about Chicago. It's amazing. But you don't want to go in the summer where you're sweating it on a boat for two hours. So you got to do that in the fall time. And uh, so maybe we'll still pull off a, a second overnight in Chicago before winter. Before I don't we're know. Just like I don't think we're going to make it the end of August. I don't know. Whatever. So this time we are going up to Wisconsin, uh, to a lake in Wisconsin. Small little charming town. Little lake resort town to uh, just get away. And, and, and the goal on that is to not only have a good time, but I, I think we're really going to like the area. I've, I've been to the area before many years ago. Um, and I think the goal will be to scout out if for some reason our place is a flop, which it looks very nice. Um, it's a resort and spa and all that kind of good stuff. Um, that we want to scout out the place that we'll be at next time for sure. Like our if landing place, like this is the place yeah, we like is, to go. Yeah, this is what we think, but yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you never know. But everyone asks us like, oh my gosh, you have eight kids. Like, how do you even, like, what, what do you do with eight kids when you're gone? Like, Brad, you don't understand. Like, we can't even get like a date night because we have, and we have two kids. How do you guys go away for two days with eight kids? Like, what, what, don't the neighbors call the police when you just leave them home alone <laughs> with food in the backyard? So, so I have to say, first, we have an amazing church family. Mm-hmm. Just amazing. And they, they are family, like truly family. And um, we have not, have we, I don't even know, have we ever paid for a babysitter? We've, we have. I mean, but oh, it's man. like a handful of times that we've ever paid for a babysitter. In 12 years. In 12 years. Yeah, less, like, kind of less than one hand. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is, you know, you've got all different ages of um, of kids at the church and, you know, young adults and families. And so sometimes we swap with other families. Sometimes um, the young adults um, will come over and babysit. and uh, um, And then... The beautiful thing is that we serve each other in different ways. So, you know, someday our children will be babysitting for the, the people that babysat for them. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's it's lovely, and we're very thankful for that. So if you don't have a good church family, get a good church family. <laughs> but, you know, part of the goal is is that you want to have kids that behave and can mm-hmm. function um, in these times so that you can take a break. You know, no yeah. one, no one... I don't know, I don't mean this meanly, but no one wants to watch kids that are horrible, rotten, no fun to yeah. watch kids, right? Mm-mm. Like like so so you have to you have to envision like what what does it even mean to enjoy a three year old? Right? Like is your three year old an enjoyable child? Like will he come and sit down when he's asked? Like can he sit still enough on your lap to actually read them a story? Right? Can they can they go over in a corner and play by themselves for 20 minutes go well the, that sounds bad you know that sounds wrong go in a corner and play by go in a yourself. go in the family room no, and just another space and play by themselves but those are, those are all skills like mm-hmm. that that you you have to build up to this moment right and right. and these are some of the skills that we teach in our program obviously link in mm-hmm. description but independent playtime is a huge a huge skill that you have to teach young and early you do, yeah. We start very, very early teaching independent play. I mean, as soon as um, baby's having a wake time, like I will feed the baby in the morning and put her back down in her crib and turn on her mobile, and she watches that while I work with other kids, getting them dressed and ready for the day. Um, so, I, I mean, that's play pen time for a two-month-old. And uh, so it's playpen, starts... playpen time. What's that, Greta? Playpen time. Uh, that's something they used to do in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s, and it is so out of date now. You don't love your kids. <laughs> if you stick you them in a pen, put them in a pen where yeah. pigs go, pigs belong in pens. Yeah, no. Um, so, some of the things that we practice with our kids, and, uh, and I do want to preface with our kids are not perfect, they're not perfect, but. With our training, they are 
pretty enjoyable kids to be around. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to throw that out there. Like, you can't have perfect children. It doesn't exist. No, but you can eliminate the really bad, but, ugly stuff. Yeah, which you can. You makes can. life go much smoother. You can. Uh, training does amazing things. So anyway, so some of the things that we train um, with our kids are play pen time, blanket time, um, quiet sit time. Uh, and I would say those are the big three, and you can you can have those in different forms, right? So play pen time is exactly what you think. You put your child in a play pen, and they play there quietly. And uh, they can play there quietly for up to... 45 minutes to an hour if, when you train them. And it is a wonderful time for them to be really concentrated on something. And I think it helps my kids build creativity. Uh, they don't have to be too creative if you give them a playroom full of toys and, uh, you know, if they get bored with one thing, they, they just throw it and move on to the next. You know, they don't have to learn to be creative with it. But if you give them um, a, some blocks... Or you know, uh, toy some car of the, or... yeah, toy car, whatever. You, they they there's nothing else to do but to let their imagination go, right? And they can actually they can box out all these distractions around them and actually focus on the thing at hand. Because the goal of blanket time or or what you do on blanket time or or, or uh, high chair time, play pen time, is you give them just one thing. That's Right, a couple things. Yeah, a few yeah, you things. can get them, get them a few things, Minimal but things. not overwhelming, not mm -hmm. overwhelming things. When we when we inundate our children with things, they tend to get like I don't they're, even know. they're used to a high hit of dopamine, right? So dopamine is a chemical in our brain that makes us like, oh, that's cool, you know, mm -hmm. like when you hear your favorite song and you like want to dance and you get all excited, that's dopamine rushing into your brain. And I don't know, I don't want to digress, but the problem in society today is like. We can get a really high, high, high hit of dopamine, like on our cell phone, for example, thumbing through Twitter or doing the iPhone shuffle, you know, checking the seven things you like to check every 10 minutes um, or more often um, with very, very little amount of effort, right? And it used to be back in the old days, you know, the cavemen or whatever, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's kind of a joke. Uh, like they, they would have to like work all day long to maybe kill something to eat it, right? And so they would go all day with no dopamine hit and then they would see something and kill it and then they would find it. So like this whole work work for stimulus thing is, is so backwards and to teach our children, um, you know. Contentment. Contentment. Yeah. And that uh, we don't need to get dopamine hits every five minutes helps them concentrate and yeah. act like normal human beings, <laughs> unlike their father who's on his phone constantly. So... Anyway, playpen time is one of those things. And, and you do have to work up to it. Like, you do have to work up to the 45 minutes. Um, but it's a, it's a great tool. We've used that with all of our kids from the time they were little. And um, if I needed to do something uh, when I only had one child, you know, I would put her in there. Like, if I was cleaning toilets and I didn't want her crawling around, um, I would put her in the playpen and we, she could have playpen time for a good half an hour while I power clean the house. Um, now I use it for when I have school with the older ones, my young one will be in the playpen. It's a safe place where I know that my little one's not going to be crawling around, getting into things, um, doing th things that they shouldn't be or unsafe things. Uh, and I can concentrate on school with the bigger ones for a good portion of time. And uh, so, so that's playpen time. Then we've got blanket time, which is another one of my favorite activities because it not only teaches, it not, not only gives that structure and it, it has some elements, the same elements that playpen time does, you know, that that focus and that creativity. But the, the added bonus with blanket time is that they actually learn to obey boundaries. So, which I think is a super important skill. And people are always like, well, how soon can you put a blanket down and trust them to stay on a blanket and obey and not go off the blanket, not crawl off the blanket. Well, I, as soon as they're crawling, you can teach them to <laughs> stay on the blanket. As soon as you're ready to teach them is yeah. the answer. Yeah, you can. You can teach them to obey those boundaries. And this makes training um, to stay in bed. Some, You know, once you switch to that big, big bed um, where they can 
easily get out of bed. Um, it helps them to obey those boundaries. It helps them to obey um, any other boundaries that you might need to set for them. Um, so like if you need them to stay in one room, you know, you can tell them, do not cross this border. You know, you need to stay in plain here. And, and you can trust that they're going to do that and they're going to be safe. Um, if you're cooking on the stove with hot oil and you don't want them right under your feet, you can put out that blanket or, or tell them to stay in one room and they, they will do that. They will obey that. So um, I love that added bonus of teaching them the blanket time, teaching them to obey boundaries. And these are the skills you, you have to remember. Listen, the, the only thing harder than training your children is not training your children. Okay. Can I tell a quick story? Yeah. Okay. So we we used to be um, at the. <laughs> this she could anything could come out of her mouth right now. It's not we, bad. We used to be a lot of things. No. Prior in to church. Christ, here we go. No, no, no. All right, just, was, just tell them. No, nope, just was, tell them. This, Let's do I'm this. I'm talking about in church when when we used to have a worship band um, in church and we would go before church to practice and uh, we had Annika who was 13 months old and she I could not figure out blanket time. I mean, for the life of me, I, I could not, I didn't understand how to get her to stand on a blanket. And um, I figured it out, though. Um, and now I teach that to people. Um, but I could not get her to stand on a blanket. And it was so frustrating because there were tissue boxes on the rows in the church, in the pews. And so she would go around and she would tear out all the tissues. And then, and then once one box was empty, she'd go on to the next one and tear out all the tissues. And I was running up and down, up and down from the stairs up to the stage, uh, cleaning up tissues, you know, bringing her back to the toys and bringing her back to the toys. And it was one of the most frustrating things. I'm like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to get her to stay on the blanket. And it was one of the most amazing things. She was 13 months old at the time. So we were a little bit, we were a little light. Um... And uh, I put her on the blanket, taught her how to stay there. And every time I would, we would go to church in the, on Sunday mornings, she'd play nicely on her blanket with a few toys. And I would actually pull this thing out every time we went to the doctor's office um, or, you know, anywhere that um, I needed her to sit quietly. Or if I would just have coffee with a friend and I didn't want her running around a house, you know, I'd just bring my blanket with a couple of toys and put it out and she would play there quietly. And it was just so beautiful. So, um, super, super great activity. So, do you have anything to say about blanket time? No. Or do you want me to I, just move on? No, I, th I think that's great. I think we're about, I think that yeah. about r finishes it. Well, yeah. And so, and then there's, there's sit time, sitting time. So, and this can come in many different forms. That can be high chair, you know, you can teach your child how to, to play quietly in the high chair, like before or after meals while you're cleaning up or prepping, prepping <clears throat> for meals. Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Oh, I, okay. I, that was the, hey, I need to butt in here as soon as you're done, but you finish your thought. Okay. Um, it could be, you know, sit on um, a certain chair and read your book. It could be um, sit here and, and listen while I read you something or tell you something or talk to you or teach you um, or sit at the table while I'm doing something else. You know, so sit time can take many different forms, but it's just when you put your child in this place, like... You're, you need to obey. You need to stay here until mommy tells you or daddy tells you. You may get down. And um, a lot of people say like, oh, I, you know, they sit at the counter. They sit at the table. They do activities at the, you know, while I'm cooking or whatever um, at the counter. And they stay, you know, they stay there. Well, until they don't want to stay there and they get down all on their own, you know. And, and who's in control then? The child's in control. So it's, it's, about, it's about parental control and authority and... Um, in a loving way, of course, right? But um, teaching your child to be obedient to those instructions. Well, and so a, a lot of times, and, and then we're going to run, but it's like, okay, uh, oh, your child won't behave and sit still at church or the doctor or anywhere else. Okay, pro tip, and then we got to go. Your child is not ever going to perform in public that which he has not performed in your home, right? So don't have an expectation that your child is somehow going to magically sit through all of church when he doesn't sit bored in a chair at home, right? So these are the things that you can practice. Like you can literally have church practice 
at your house and pull up a chair and turn on a sermon and sit your child there for 45 minutes or whatever, okay? So whatever expectation that you have, you, you have to practice these things. These, mm-hmm. these don't just magically happen and it's not just magically the child's temperament, right? This it just takes work. Some children take a little less work. Some children take a little more work. But either way, it takes work and all these things can greatly improve the life of your child and improve the logistic life of you as mom and dad so you can continue to function and get things done as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, practice and training is so very important. Practice and training. Yes. All right, so <laughs> there's links in the description as well. If you have toddler woes, potty training woes, baby sleeping woes, there's links in the description. You need to click on those. We will dramatically transform your life and you can join the ranks of thousands of other moms. Um, you can click right here to uh, watch more videos and uh, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. But leave that five-star review for us on iTunes. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.